I definitely read the book because I read the book at school. And I can't honestly remember when I saw the Bolting Brothers movie for the first time. Um, but once I'd got involved in adapting the book um, for a, con a contemporary uh, version of the film, um, or at least updated, uh, I went back to the, to the Bolting Brothers movie and watched it several times. So um, over the last couple of years, in the early days of developing the script, I kind of got to know it quite well. It has a lot of strengths as a film, um, and it's sort of difficult to know where to begin. Um, the, 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 mo the thing it is most known for is Attenborough's performance. Um, what's interesting to me about that is that although Attenborough had been in the play, there was an original play version of, of Brighton Rock adapted from the book before the Bolting Brothers movie was made. Um, Green loathed the play. He, he loathed the production so much he wanted his name taken off it. So um, it was a brave decision on the part of the Boltings to go to war with Green, effectively, uh, who was attached to write the screenplay by that time, um, insisting on casting Attenborough. And their argument was, we're going to cast Attenborough not because he was in the play, but because uh, he had been enormously successful and done a brilliant performance in In Which We Serve. And the Bolting brothers felt that Green was wrong about Attenborough, that although he had boyish good looks, th that he would have the range and the subtlety and the depth to carry Pinky off. Um, and obviously they were right. It's the performance that Attenborough's probably best known for. It's the performance that really put him on the map. And I think what's interesting about it is the fidgety, nervous energy, the, 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 the sense of cunning and manipulation, the, 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 the way that when you watch Attenborough's performance, you can actually hear the cogs turning and crunching in Pinky's devious mind. And that's a brilliant transposition to film from the novel, where you're actually able to um, read the, the, the literal description of those cogs turning, which of course you can't do in the film, it's not splattered with voiceover. So um, it, it, it's a riveting performance. Um, but, but there are lots of other things. Um, there's the fact that the Bolting brothers shot most of the movie in Brighton on location, which was really unusual at that time, uh, in the late 40s. Um, and that gave a kind of authenticity, I think, to the film that it wouldn't have had if they'd shot most of it in Wellin Studios, which is in fact where they only shot a few interiors. Um, I could go on forever. Um, uh, Harry Waxman's cinematography is exceptional for the time and really turns Brighton into this kind of purgatory that Graham Greene imagined it to be when he started to write the novel. Um, it, it's rightly thought of as, as maybe the greatest British noir of all time. Um, and it was tough to make noir in those days. Um, uh, film stock was slow, and you had to uh, crank the lights up high um, and turn the stops on your camera down. And, and, and what they managed on a budget of, I think, £178,000, which was below average for the time, was to produce um, just a remarkable piece of filmmaking. I think it's astonishing how faithful the, fi the, the film is to the book. Um, it was censored um, quite heavily by the British censor at the time, who was a man um, uh, who I think was called um, Brooke Wilkinson, um, who um, felt that to be as explicitly Catholic as the screenplay and the film were, um, in the context of telling the story of a vicious murder would offend Catholics. So actually the original screenplay was far more imbued with Catholicism than the final movie ended up being. Um, but Catholicism is still very much present in the film. Um, and I, I think um, with great effect, you know, some critics at the time, uh, I think the Daily Mirror said that um, it had basically been stripped of, of its Catholicism and Catholicism had simply become an adornment. It, curiously enough, I got exactly the same criticism for, for my adaptation of the book. Uh, but I don't think it's true, and I think Green rightly defended himself at the time actually writing to the Daily Mirror. Um, and, um, you know, it, it, its ability to stay as relentlessly and ruthlessly dark as the book is when it was made in an era where it dictated mostly by American audiences. Movies were, were saccharine and romantic and happy endings. Uh, again, 
chimes slightly with the, the context in which um, the contemporary movie has been made, uh, was just a, a great um, testimony to the, the the real teamwork and synthesis between the Bolting brothers and Green. I'm sure the relationship wasn't always an easy one, but um, you know, to, to be able to make a movie where an author as judgmental and intolerant as Green gives you two thumbs up effectively is, um, again, just an extraordinary achievement. If I had to boil that down to one idea, I would say it's the idea of the fallen angel. In other words, a character who is possessed of beauty, of charisma, of magnetism, of charm, um, but a character who is motivated principally by hatred. Um, and that combination of ugliness and attractiveness uh, is, to my mind, the, the, the all-time most interesting character template. You, you find it over and over again in movies and over and over again in books. Um, but I love the combination of evil shot through with the possibility of love and redemption. Um, and, I, and we know, because Green said so, that he, he felt that Pinky probably hadn't gone to hell. Um, uh, and uh, that's partly to do with Green's own cosmology, but I think what's interesting about Pinky is that he's not just a mustachio twirling two-dimensional villain. He's um, a, a man, a young man, motivated by fear. And I think that makes him a very accessible character, especially in a, in a culture uh, motivated by fear, which ours is now. No. Uh, audiences at the time, certainly if the reviews are anything to go by, felt that Brighton Rock was cheap, nasty, false sensationalism. And if you think about both the novel and the movie, um, it's neither false nor sensational. It's not false because the character of Pinky is an authentic character. Um, he's a character um, uh, shot through with truth. And that character, and indeed other characters around him, motivate the plot. So you have that authenticity bleeding into the whole story. In fact, we know because Green has told us that the characters really guided the plot. So in that sense, there's nothing false about the movie, quite apart from the fact they had Carl Ramon, who had carried the switchblade for a famous gangster called Sabini as an advisor on set, uh, and indeed that it was, you know, shot on location in Brighton, which was unusual for films at the time. So, so you know, um, we're a sophisticated enough audience now, I think, to appreciate its, its truthfulness. Um, and would we feel that it was sensational nowadays? Certainly in the context of, of movies that are incredibly sensational, um, and there are a lot of them about now. No, I don't think we would. Um, and we especially wouldn't if we are um, aware of the fact that Green's portrait of evil was designed to shock, um, uh, principally because he wanted you to get a taste of the, the kind of foul-hearted cynicism and... and um, manipulation that that evil men perpetrate uh, it was designed to be shocking so um, to that extent um, uh, it, it can't be conceived of as, as sensationalism there was there was an important point behind it um, and I think modern audiences are and this is why the the, the re-release is so fantastically timely um, are more sophisticated and and less easily offended than they were in those days um, you know, uh, uh, if one screened the movie um, in Utah, um, you might get a different response. But I'm speaking of a kind of average metropolitan um, and fairly knowing audience who I think would simply be compelled by the film without ha experiencing moral indignation. It's impossible to to objectively answer that question, because I'm not Green. Um, I, what I would say is that Green felt that Attenborough did. Um, you know, we know, as I've, as I've mentioned, that he, he initially objected to the casting of Attenborough, that the Bolting brothers, in a sense, overrode Green. Um, and we know that uh, Green um, wrote Attenborough a letter, which Attenborough, um, I think, cherishes to this day, that said, I can't, cannot imagine, I had misgivings 
but I cannot imagine the role um, being performed any better. Um, that's as distinct from the Daily Mail or Mirror at the time that said that Pinky's, Attenborough's Pinky was as close to the Pinky in the book as Donald Duck was to Greta Garbo. Um, uh, I think audiences need to judge for themselves, but um, certainly to my mind, if the author was satisfied, then I'm satisfied. <laughs>